ladies, gentlemen, and disappointments. We are coming to you live from the Woman Caves in New York and Connecticut. My name is Leslie. And my name is Melissa. And we are Verbally Disastrous. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Leslie M. Jasper of the Verbally Disastrous podcast that can be found on over 20 podcast platforms and YouTube. I just added the podcast and my audio blog to Amazon Music. So go and check that out. If that is your preferred podcast platform, just letting you know that I am there now. Just in case you are not aware, we are in hurricane season. The latest hurricane is Hurricane Larry. So please be safe, people. Things can be replaced, but people cannot be replaced. And we have to count our blessings when it is not the absolute worst thing that can go down. Got to count our blessings. Remember to do that. I have been off the grid lately. It started out when I rented a cabin up in Franklin, New York. It's near Oneonta in about three hours northwest of New York City. And this was in honor of my birthday. I had bad Wi-Fi there. You would have to go to the main building in order to get better Wi-Fi. So I opted to just lay low on that. I figured try to enjoy the week without having my nose in my social media. So that's how it started out. My sons came up and uh, we all endured a cabin without air conditioning. We just had fans at night. There was a couple nights where it was really hot and not comfortable. And then it cooled down towards the latter part of the week. But we roughed it. (laughs) I used a bucket to to clean with and I made sure we were cooking a couple times a day using the grill. I bought a heavy duty cast iron grill that I gotta find the little contraption that's got some poles where it hangs over the fire ring and then you hook to the tripod some chain onto each side of the cast iron so that I could say do it over a fire ring. So that is on my list of things to do between now and next summer is to find a tripod contraption so that I can use it to hang over a fire ring. Say I meet up with the boys or with friends and we can cook something, say at a park that has a fire ring. My goal is to find one of those. So if anybody could reach out to me on social media and give me some links, I would most certainly appreciate it. I am running a risk (laughs) that I may forget about it after being invested in it and wanting one so I'll have to see if I find one between now and then and hopefully I don't forget worst case I can have fun and make one I could put one together damn it we'll see but I'm sure we'll touch on that on the next camping trip it hasn't been a priority on my list it's just a thought that I've had pop up ever since the latest camping trip I would actually like an air mattress that had the foam topper, like say a three inch topper, you know, as a person who still loves to camp, but my back has other plans. (laughs) I would like to find those little creature comforts so I can enjoy the things that we used to do in my youth, which is camping, only I can't do the tent thing anymore. Well, I could still do the tent, but I have to have a decent spot to sleep or else I have back pain for days. I came back and I was planning to go to the New Jersey shore with friends for an extra long Labor Day weekend. My neighbors and I are some unlucky bastards when Hurricane Ida hit us with a flash flood two days before I was scheduled to go down in New Jersey. Now, once this happened, I didn't even want to leave the house. I felt like I needed to stay and babysit, but my friends wanted me to go enjoy it because the whole reason why we're all getting together was in honor of my birthday. My friends wanted me to go despite what happened to my Honda CRV and house basement. So they picked me up. I let 
the car air out for a couple of days. I put some plastic bag like to droop over the window and then closed it between the door jam so that way I could have the car breathe for a couple of days while I wasn't there to babysit it. So going away, partaking of the beer and liquor, it worked like a charm to distract my mind for at least 24 to 48 hours. Of course, I thought about the problems as soon as I was heading back up on Sunday morning. I was initially supposed to stay till Tuesday, but they don't allow dogs in the complex, and I didn't really have anybody to watch Daisy. Uh, she's 10 years old, coming up on November, and she has never been to a kennel. In the past, I've always felt bad for putting them into a kennel, but I'm realizing that I should do that so that I have some range of flexibility and don't feel some kind of way when I can't go somewhere <laughs> because I can't bring the dog with me. So I need to get past that hurdle and tell myself it's okay. You can put the dog in a kennel for a couple of days so that you can enjoy what's <laughs> the last part. The last two quarters of my life. <laughs> I'm sure by now you must be wondering, all right, what happened? How did it happen? What were the events? Hurricane Ida was a Category 4 storm with winds as high as 172 miles per hour when it first reached land down in Louisiana. Hurricane Ida then traveled north in a northeast direction and then it started hitting states between the coastline and inland uh, hitting Alabama, Mississippi, Kentucky, West Virginia, Tennessee, Virginia, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, and Connecticut in no particular order. And if for some reason I missed your state, I greatly apologize. It was not my intention. I did read that the Hurricane Ida death count was 52, of which nine people died here in New York. I want to say rest in peace to the families that have lost loved ones as a result of this hurricane or any other natural disaster. When you see disaster videos on YouTube, and then you see the comment section. I am floored by the people with nasty negative energy. You always think that that is not the right time to bring in your politics, whatever side you are on. That's what you get for ignoring global warming. It's all your fault. I read these comments from the Karens of the internet and look at it and think to myself, here you go using a format or a platform. It's not really necessary to talk about a subject that I really don't think you care about. Okay, Karen, you really don't care about global warming. You just want to rain on someone's bad luck. <laughs> One would say global warming hinges on a network of people's efforts over an entire global platform of everybody doing things how they want with carbon emissions, their carbon footprint, their energy usage, blasting through copious amounts of gasoline, uh, reckless use of coal, opting to not recycle, throwing those lithium batteries in the garbage, you name it. It takes a whole village to create the mess that we're in, not just one person. It's a culmination of many people, so like blaming someone for global warming because they got caught up in it and they're sharing tragic videos. It's like, why? What is going on in the minds of these people who think it is okay to throw their negative energy on a post. I'm so glad that I'm a construction worker. I got thick skin, wide shoulders, and often laugh at all these comments that are thrown out there. When I posted uh, a couple of the flood videos, and then I was poking fun at the personal pool that I had in the back of the Honda, 
It's designed to like show people what's going on. Just share the story. I'm not looking for sympathy. But it's like, what's with the nasty comments? I will never understand why someone doesn't just wish someone the best energy possible. You know, have a better day. Hope you get past this. Rest in peace to your family. Why not just offer words of encouragement? I read a comment where someone tried to use a political affiliation, say of New York as a democratic state, to justify why people deserve tragedy to happen to them. I'm like, these people are messed up. I'm, I'm glad I can laugh at this nonsense. Who says stuff like that? I think it's so weird that people would push such negative energy on other people. There was always a reason why I kept to myself <laughs> as a kid. Because people are fucking weird. It, the comment has more to say about the person putting it out than the person that the comment was directed towards. Always. I, I can't imagine seeing somebody go through something on a video and just figure, okay, now it's the time to push my political agenda or blame, put any kind of blame on one person or one group of people. A lot of the stuff that people spew is quite ridiculous. The same people that talk about global warming and carbon footprints are the same people who are benefiting from the factories and from the large corporations that spit out the toxins into the air, soil, dirt, water, you name it, because they're all going to keep shopping. And every time you keep shopping, you're pushing the giant corporation to keep pressing forward with little regard for the environment. Every time they put out an iPad or a new automobile or those new clothes that you want. It's important to consider the environmental impact of each one of these products from the moment it is created to the moment it goes into the landfill. Take for instance a little village in Malaysia where you have a factory that is down the road and upstream from them so every time they create those goods or products that you're wanting to purchase in that process, they release a bevy of toxins that go into the river, which is the village's life source of everything that they need to care for their village. Now that gets polluted, so the people of Malaysia are making a sacrifice so that you can have some iPad or some clothes sitting up on a shelf for when you decide that you want to make that purchase. One should be thinking about the life cycle of that product is no longer useful and then it goes into a landfill where does that go how does that impact the person on the side of the globe where that has landed instead people want to waste time looking at videos on the internet and poking fun at a person's tragedy when they should be thinking a little bit deeper than just m rattling off some carbon footprint catchphrases or some salacious global warming news title that came from the mouth of your favorite newscaster. Rattling off catchy phrases that were spewed by others doesn't do anything other than kick the can of environmental problems down the road. We have the internet at our fingertips. We didn't have that back when I was a kid. You can research each and every product and find out the true impact of their carbon footprint. You then can take action to work collectively with others to boycott a product until the corporation does better. Every time you make a purchase knowing that a village in Malaysia is subjected to toxic water, you also have your hand in the contribution to the factory water pollution. Factories will be forced to do better if people boycott them because of their terrible garbage disposal practices. Instead of people rattling off 5 o'clock news catchphrases, they should dive deeper into the problem. Yes, New York City has done its own fair share of pollution. It's the Greta Thunbergs of the world who pushed the factories to do better. Young people should be pissed off at the fact that the Pacific garbage patch that's the size of Texas even exist. After all, 
they will be in charge of the society of the future. Imagine if every teenager shifted their energy from creating TikTok videos, video game marathons, and idle Snapchat to use their social media and spending power to force large corporations to do better? I would be in absolute awe and have much respect if that ever happened. I know my Generation X group didn't band together or didn't try to do any of that, but then again, we didn't have social media at our fingertips. Yes, that's not a good enough excuse. I hope the new generation does better. But now we become adults and get into our day-to-day -day grind and don't think about doing anything other than what's just inside our house and not much past our front door. I have my reasons as to why I went on a mini environmental pollution rant. This was because the majority of the comments on my YouTube street flooding videos for the past week have been about how New York is primarily responsible for global warming. How more hurricanes are coming up on the weather menu because of global warming. I'm here to state that if you truly believe your own catchphrases, then we all need to work together. The global warming fight requires collective efforts of every single citizen on Earth. We need to band together with our voices and our wallets. Until that happens, life will remain status quo. I know as big as the New York City population is, when you compare the population of New York City to the rest of the world, we are a drop in the bucket. That's why I believe that we all must collectively work together on a global scale to force people such as corporations and individuals to do better. And until we do that, it'll stay the same. I'll never understand the level of toxic poison that people put on the internet. They wouldn't have the balls to say that to a person's face in real life. I highly doubt that any of those people who put out that negative energy would say that to a person standing right in front of them. Hey, the moral of the story, just be kind to people. I am in favor of some jokes or some good ball breaking, but it has to make sense and it has to be witty. So if it's not coming with either one of them, it just sounds stupid. Now looking on the bright side of the rainbow of the shit sandwich. Whether it's a negative comment or a positive, you still commented. So that helps my algorithm on YouTube. So. I'm grateful for the person stopping by who doesn't like that I have a potty mouth. I don't care, Karen. Thanks for your two cents, but I'm going to say whatever the fuck I want. And if you don't like it, go somewhere else. We're good. Now let's move on. One would say, okay, you saw a flash flood warning. Why didn't you move? Well, flash flood warnings, whenever they pop up, it impacts anybody that is Along the water, say the Rockaways, Brooklyn, over by the water, say Coney Island, Manhattan, the lower part of Manhattan often gets flooded. So usually when you see it, you go, okay, I'll keep my eyes out, but I'm not really thinking it's going to happen over here. Uh, I returned to the house around 7.30, 8 o'clock after getting my nails done. I literally closed the place. But I'm a regular customer over there. So now when I was coming back around between 7.30 and 8 o'clock, I didn't see any water that was rising or elevated to where I needed to be concerned about throwing the dog in the car and, and heading up north. The flash flooding, I believe, started happening between 9 to 10 p.m. That's what I believe. Now, I tend to keep a shade open to save energy versus having to throw lights on. I try to wait until it's absolutely dark and I'm not getting any natural light in on my windows before I put the lights on. I went to go look out the window and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And this was probably around 10, 10.30. I thought my eyes were deceiving me. So I ran downstairs, opened up the door, the screen door, and looked out. And I'm like, oh no, like a panic. The water's coming, the water's coming. You already know the basement's flooded. And it felt like it was going to flood the first floor. So I ran around, picked up any electronics that were sitting on the first floor, took all my tools, made sure those puppies 
or not on the first floor, put them up on the second floor, and was running around trying my best to pull things up just in case, because this looked like it was going to be crazy. Like, it was already crazy. I've never seen it flood all the way up to the steps. I've seen the, like, puddles in, in the street, but not, not on this level. It, it almost feels like, wow, you always see it in the news, but to actually experience it in real time, it felt like it wasn't real. So I figured, why not record? So I put a couple of videos online and put them on my Verbally Disastrous channel that's on YouTube. So I figured I might as well take a negative and turn it into a positive since my goal is to become monetized. So anybody that could go on and like the videos, share, click, subscribe, comment, you name it. That would be very helpful and highly appreciated. Since I'm powerless to do anything, I might as well capture what was going on at that moment and share it. I mean, my goal was to share it. Um, I'm not a victim. Uh, we were survivors. I'm grateful that nobody close to me died as a result of hurricanes or any form of natural disasters. So I'm, I'm grateful that in the big scheme of things, it was minimal. But as soon as I recorded a couple times. I ran upstairs to warn my buddy who owns the house about the floodwaters and I began praying for the flooding to stop and recede. You know, I was able to walk the streets around 1 a.m. to assess the damage inside the car, but I didn't want to open it because I just mentally was not ready to, to deal with it. Uh, I couldn't go to sleep until about 3 a.m. Then I woke up around 9 a.m. to assess the damage in my car. So I go to open it and of course the floor mats, I have rubber mats, those were flooded with water. And then I go to pull the things that are in the trunk of my car. I'm always in transit <laughs> as a uh, construction worker. You always got to be ready for all types of seasons and uh, load it up with PPE and, and whatnot. As I said, I couldn't go to sleep until 3 a.m. and then got up at 9 and went out there with a extension cord and a fan. I go to pull my spare tire and that was looked like a swimming pool. So it took me about three buckets worth to unload that. I pressed towels to try to dry it out the best that I can. I got the fan going. Even a week later, I've used a sponge to pull up excess water that's on the passenger side of the car and the floorboards. Even a week later, uh, my Honda is still wet. I have feverishly tried to dry my car out and I was hoping that I didn't have to put a claim in on my insurance. The computer is currently haywire on the Honda. I think today I had another ma major malfunction. It killed me to have to do it, but I had to submit the claim for the Honda. I have no idea if it can be fixed or if it must be totaled. <laughs> it is really upsetting since I'm closer to having it being paid off versus the front end of the loan. It's almost paid for. You couldn't pay me to try to buy a car down here in New York because you don't know if it's been flooded and they're trying to sell it as a new car. So I'm gonna have to go up in the worst case scenario and get a car back in my home base, Mystic, Groton area. I hope that they don't have any issues up there. This is worst case scenario because I would rather keep my car and hopefully it can get fixed. I also heard that there is a shortage on cars and then with that, you know that cars are being overpriced if there's a shortage. This is frustrating. I have no idea if that's true since I haven't looked at any car lots lately. And I'm sure any car lot by me also was flooded. So <laughs> I'm not buying any cars in New York. I'd have to go back up to Connecticut probably uh, to the same spot where I got this Honda. I really wanted to keep my Honda for years to come. I wanted to pay it off and keep it and not have to keep buying cars. However, I believe that once this happens, the Honda will never be the same again. Car problems are a pet peeve of mine. This is so frustrating to me and such a distraction from anything else that is going on in life. I can't even verbally articulate how pissed off I am about the situation. Now my friend's basement, he's like a brother to me, was flooded as well. Thankfully, there wasn't a bunch of stuff down there that was valuable. He's just got stuff that you put in a basement where you don't have any other place to put it. The bad thing now is that there is no hot water since the water heater and some valves need to be replaced. 
it is a gas hot water heater so you have to worry about accidental gas leaks when the pilot light goes out i know other people have it far worse than we do therefore i'm grateful for it being minimal in the big scheme of things it is still a headache it still worries me every time i gotta put a claim in i don't want my insurance company telling me okay we're gonna drop you meanwhile this is this is stuff that you <laughs> can't control had i seen like a little bit of flooding i would have bolted out there and and would have taken off it would have went up i wouldn't have stayed down here so i know other people as i said have it far worse i am near mass transit down here if i need to go somewhere so it's better than having it happen to me up in connecticut or anybody else's house up in the suburbs because then i would have been stuck up there dealing with this stuff so the best part is as i said a million times no one died no one got hurt i have to count my blessings I wanted to let you all know that this is why I've not released any new podcast episodes lately. I thank you for stopping by to listen to me bitch about my problems and check out this podcast episode on, on Hurricane Ida. I have a goal, as I mentioned before, to make the Verbally Disastrous YouTube channel monetized. So if you can help me with this goal by going on to my YouTube channel and click the like, share, subscribe i would truly appreciate it especially now it might as well take something negative and make it into a positive and you are so appreciated wherever you are on earth i wish you well i hope you don't endure any kind of these natural disasters because it's terrible i will never understand the people who put negativity out there based off of some tough stuff that someone is going through but I guess misery loves misery. I wish you a much better day than myself. Peace out, Cub Scout. This wraps up another episode on the Verbally Disastrous Podcast that can be found on Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. For more information, head over to www.constructiontales.com. Thank you for listening, and have a great one.